Yes, people, welcome back to 1894. I'm Hugh and I've got Dara here with me for the final preview of the season. We've got another preview coming out tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. It's an opposition fan view. But the last one myself and Dara are doing for the season is the Champions League final, the one that we've, we've been waiting for for so long and it's so exciting, so nerve wracking. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get right into it. Right, Dara, here we are. We we weren't sure at one stage of the, of the, of the season if we get to this stage of the competition based on our, our pre Christmas performance, but I'm absolutely. Like I've, I've only been so nervous for a game my whole entire life. What do you feel? Oh, so the exact same. And I'm on the edge of my seat. Obviously, it's been a lot. It's been a long, long week in the build up to it. Obviously, working. It's just everything's in your head. Are we going to win? Are we going to win? And you know, I don't see why we're not confident going into it. I am confident, but again, it's our first Champions League final. I really, and I know the players are hungry. I am confident in this now. How about yourself? I'm very. I, I said in our preview. Um, for the Everton game that we won 5-0, that every last bit of advantage, percentage, whatever you want to call it, it, it absolutely matters going into a final. I know, listen, the cliche term is form goes out the window for a Champions League final or any final, but you know what I mean? You want every little bit of, of, of luck or, or good confidence behind you, and the Everton win absolutely did that for me. You probably agree with me when I say that it looked like probably the first performance in, in a long time where the players are really, really hungry. They really, really went for it. Um, a lot of players trying to put their name in the mix for the chat for this game, the Champions League final, through putting in good performance against Everton. Well, what what do you think on that? Do you kind of agree with me on the whole kind of confidence sort of thing? One hundred percent, yeah. Um, we've shown it time and time again this season that when we've gone from a league that we've pretty much won to game time crunch and Champions League, like when our league form dipped off a bit, but then we played Paris and we looked locked in, we were ready to go again. And it's shown it showed in Everton because everyone was hungry. Jesus, he was brilliant that game. We usually give him a lot of stick. Sterling was a bit off the boil, but he's coming into it. You can tell he's getting some of his mojo back. De Bruyne and Foden in the midfield were brilliant. And it's just it's given Pep the best kind of headache. We all we said that near we said that at the start of the year. He, Pep has a great a number of great talented players to choose from. And you know, it's only gonna speak to them hopefully in the final. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, it's our first time in a Champions League final as well, the club's first time. Do you think that plays part? But I think to look at it, to answer that question as well, you obviously have to realise the fact that you have gone to has played in the final. Pep has won 14 out of 15 finals, speaks for itself, absolutely ruthless when it comes to finals. How, how confident are you? I know we're both nervous because we're both fans um, and we'll be where we are watching the game, but how, how confident are you? How confident am I? That's a, that's a question now. I'm not... I. I don't see any reason why I shouldn't be confident, but at the same time, it's a Champions League final. We've not been here before. But in other finals, we've seen over the last few years, Carabao Cup finals, we've won four in a row. We've won the FA Cup. Our players are built for finals, which again, leads me to believe we shouldn't be not confident. And I am, I, I'm confident going into it, but we still know how big of a threat that Chelsea posed us. Does the fact that Chelsea have beaten us twice in the last two games we played against them, does that bother you? Does it scare you? Why? That's the only, that's the only thing that doesn't scare me about this game because we we they weren't playing our full team. We had I think it was eight changes for the for the FA Cup and then for the league we had nine changes and we only had one midfielder playing. So that part really doesn't bother me and it's surprising it doesn't bother me. But it could be a bit of a psychological thing for Chelsea. Oh, we beat them twice, but Tuch Tuch is not a stupid man. He'll know he'll know that that wasn't our full team and Pep had his. He had his cards very close to his chest when he played that reverse league fixture in the eight half. Just on the sheer size of this game, I want to have it. It's absolutely massive, isn't it? It hasn't actually sunk in with me at just how big this is. The club's first Champions League. You know, we get so much stick from rival fans. You never won a Champions League. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you can win Premier Leagues, but until you win a Champions League, you're not really on the map. Yep. It puts pressure. It puts pressure. And I feel like everyone's going against us. Like, I mean, externals, like rivals, like... No one wants to see us do well, but this is such a massive opportunity, um, and I'm I'm really excited. Do, do you think there's much pressure coming from that side? Oh, there's a huge amount of pressure. It's um obviously Chelsea having Chelsea won't have that pressure because they have won one before. But City, do, of course, are going to feel the pressure. Uh, but if there's anyone that can handle pressure, it's this team. This team have shown time and time again their mental fortitude. We saw at Paris how together they are, how together as a unit, and how hungry they are. We saw that at Everton. It's just it, it's it's geared up for it's geared up for a cagey start, but it's geared up for a really good game if both teams turn up. And you know, if I don't again, I've said it so many times this video alone, I don't see where we're not confident. 
listen, I feel like we could sit here all night and just keep having the same conversation over and over again about this game. We're just so desperate to have it happen now. Just see how it pans out. And I just beg the Blue Boys can pull through and just get us the result and get us that European Cup and put us put us on the map with one of the best teams in history. And um, You know what I mean? Like I, I'm putting off the next segment because it's such a big segment, the team choice. I think we all have a fair idea of who will play, but fingers crossed Pep makes the exact same decisions. So let's move over. To the predicted 11 and see who we have chosen okay so our final predicted 11 of the season what a sad time but also what a happy time we didn't think we get to the stage but here we are we have made our final choices of who we would like to see in our final game of the season the biggest game of the season we're going to stick it up on screen now for you to see do leave your thoughts as usual down below who would you like to see in the biggest game of the season give us your thoughts in goals no one else ederson he's been golden glove winner two seasons in a row i think that just he puts himself in the team sheet there's no other choice really all credit to scott carson for a good performance against newcastle but okay. unfortunately it has to be uh it, it has to be ederson walker right back stones and ds and a half and zinchenko uh, are the back four i think they've all had really good scenes in their own right some of them playing the football of their lives john stones kyle walker and zinchenko I think at stages of the season have played the best football of their lives in Champions League and in big games, which is why we think they'll play this one. And Diaz, uh, I don't see a world where Pep doesn't pick Diaz for this game. He has been uh, at the fulcrum of, of, of leadership and, and any success we've had this season, I feel it breeds through him. He breeds confidence into the rest of the team. He makes everyone feel confident, more comfortable to express themselves and do things and the more forward players be creative. Dara, the defence, talk to me. Speaks for itself, really, doesn't it? It, it? All of those players have every right to be playing this final. Zinchenko, brilliant in the first leg against Paris, brilliant in the second leg against Paris. Uh, Diaz, all mark all season. It, it's impossible that he'd be dropped. Uh, Stones, he, had, he maybe had a bit of a headache pick between Stones and Laporte, but if the last few games where Laporte hasn't got a look in of any form, he actually chose Garcia over him, speaks to it, then it will be John Stones starting, and I have no problem with that. He's shown this season time and time again how, how much he's come along with Diaz beside him. So it should be a match made in heaven again. Uh, Walker is, again, perfect. He can have a bit of a lapse in judgment, which would cost us now and again. But I think he's locked in again. Everyone's going to be locked in. Everyone's going to be on top confidence, top form coming into this. And I, uh, I again, speaks for itself. There shouldn't everyone there deserves to be in it. Absolutely. Moving into the midfield, Fernandinho. Gundogan and Bernardo, I think, is a lovely little trio. They all offer completely different things. I think if you'd said six months ago Fernandinho will start in the Champions League final, I probably would have said, no, nah, he won't start, but he'll feature in the last 20 minutes because he's that kind of player who'll just solidify and tighten things up. But through recent performance, lads, if you watch City every week, he's been absolutely phenomenal. He really has. He's playing it's similar to some of the back four players, some of the best football of his life at the ripe age of 36, you know. He's really leading the team. He's making fantastic tackles, breaking up opposition attacks, and he's actually contributing. He got two assists against Everton for both of Aguero's goals. I think that's priceless from a defensive midfielder. Gundogan and Bernardo offer two completely different things. Bernardo is a very energetic player who will press very high. He'll try to nick the ball off of the defenders. And then Gundogan's just a really calm, composed presence in the middle of the park. So I think that trio we've gone with, I think it's the one most people would have expected. But they also all offer really three different qualities that are, are, are going to be absolutely fantastic to see and are going to be absolutely crucial. What are your thoughts on the midfield? Having that, like you said, having those three different qualities coming together that still works so perfectly is crucial. And you always say, we always say, uh, the game is won the midfield. And we're going to have the numerical advantage, especially with, um, as you'll see, the Brian will be dropping back. We'll have the numerical advantage in midfield, and it's it's gonna we're gonna need it if we're coming up against Kante, and especially Kovacic, who I feel is a very down player player. I think he's a great he's a great talent, and we're gonna have to we're really gonna have to, to fill the midfield to be able to nullify that midfield threat. The midfield battle between both teams in this game is going to be absolutely phenomenal. It's 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 littered with star star players. You know what I mean? Kante, as Dara said, Kovacic. Um, you'll see Mason Mount probably in the midfield at some stage as well and then you've got our three boys it's it's just six absolute gem players and it's going to be for the neutrals an unbelievable spectacle you know City and Chelsea have not played each other's strongest teams in quite a while now so it'll almost be like I know they're both English schools but it'll almost be like a fresh game you know what I mean a lot of new faces facing each other for the first time in definitely a long time but moving into our front three as you guessed, Foden, De Bruyne, Mares. I mean where do I even start with these guys the three of these guys have been absolutely unbelievable this season in their own ways phil foden has broken into this team this season properly like good and proper and that is through the quality 
of management from Pep Guardiola and the decision making he made. We, a lot of people were saying he needs to go out and low, needs to go to the Championship, lower Premier League team, and, and get experience. No, absolutely wrong. I firmly believe Phil Foden will not be at the level he's at right now if Pep didn't hold on to him and train him every day and take him under his wing, put him out with De Bruyne, David Silva, Aguero, these kind of players. Phil Foden is a hybrid of so many quality players currently and in the past in the, in the City team. So it, it, it's hard not to pick him. He's shown up in really big games, goals against Liverpool, Champions League goals. You name it, the kid's done it this season. He's only 20 years old. So yep. I, I don't see a world similar to Diaz where he didn't start. De Bruyne, as Dara hinted at, will probably drop into midfield for various stages of the game because he offers a, a, another presence. Um, and that's where he plays his best football. And then Riyad Mahrez, the Algerian king, has had an unbelievable last sort of two, three months. You know, he's banging in goals and similar to Foden, really big goals. So that's why we think he will start. Um, I think that front three, uh, without saying it too weird, kind of picks itself. I really do. I think it's based on merit, based on form. Um, but before we talk about who could potentially fill in, uh, thoughts on the front three? Again, perfect. Um, we mentioned the Brian would be dropping into midfield. That'd be crucial in, in winning that midfield battle. Foden and Mahrez, again, inverting, almost playing as wide midfield, as you could say, with the wing-backs getting up. It's just, um, I, I wouldn't change anything about it. You'll notice it's the same get, same team as Paris, and why would you change it? It's not broken, don't fix it. And um, it's it's set up really, really well. Absolutely. That, that game against Paris, definitely the second half of the first leg and the whole second leg, it just, it was just a... It was just it just became clear for us that these are the players that need to play in the big games. But with that said, obviously it's a really strong starting eleven, like really strong. But we're fortunate, um, Manchester City, that we have fantastic squad depth. And the fact that we've not chosen certain players doesn't mean we think they're not good enough. It just means that I, I think they'll have an impact at some stage of the game. I do think you will see Raheem Sterling at some stage. Whether you like it or not, I think Pep likes Sterling so much and he, he has experience at the top level of football for quite a while now, even though he's still only twenty six. But Pep will bring him on at some stage. Whether that means taking Foden off, I don't know. And another kind of wild card I wanted to touch on is Aguero. It is Aguero, right? Aguero has vast, vast experience of really high-pressure games and scoring in them. We saw a glimpse against Everton on the weekend where he scored his two goals of where he, when he really wants to, he can bag a goal. When he's in the mood, he can bag a goal or two. Maybe he's not been as clinical when he's been on the pitch in recent months because he's not been as hungry. He's not felt he's, he's going to get a proper chance or he felt I'm not in the team regardless of how I do. But now he felt against Everton, if I get two goals, I break the record. He had something to play for. Champions League final, you've got something to play for. So I think maybe if it goes to extra time or there's 10 minutes to go, we're in desperate need of a goal. I would not be surprised if he, if he calls on Aguero. But I think with that said, Dara, we'll wrap up this video. So leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. We're on the road to 250 subscribers still. We'd appreciate the support. And tomorrow we have the return of the opposition fan view. We've got Mike from the Chronicle podcast, big Chelsea fan, good fan of the chat, good friend of the channel, I should say, and um, coming on. He's going to give us all his thoughts. It should be a great one as well. So do stay tuned for that. We'll see you then. Good luck. God night. God bless. <laughs> God night. God bless.